the value of r square average square root uh, for carbon is known from x-ray diffraction measurements to be around 0.7 angstroms. The density is 2220 kilograms per meter cube. Calculate the value of susceptibility. Give your answer in CSI and CGS units. The measured value is minus 13.82 times 10 to minus 6 per unit volume. The agreement for carbon is better than for most diamagnets. Comment on possible sources of error in the derivation. So we have to recall uh, the result we obtained for the diamagnetic susceptibility. The diamagnetic susceptibility is given by our result for SI units minus n mu zero z e square divided by six times mass of the electron average value of r square. So here we have <clears throat> capital N is the number density of atoms, number of atoms per meter cube. Z is our atomic number, the number of electrons. E is the electron charge, 1.6. 10 to minus 19 coulombs, mass of the electron, rest mass of the electron, 9.11, 10 to minus 31 kilograms. <clears throat> and we know that mu zero is four pi, 10 to minus seven Henry per meter. So that's a permeability of free space. And uh, R square average, that, that, that would be the uh, square root of R square average, the average radius of the carbon atom. Uh, we can calculate the number density of the atoms, N, capital N, as number of atoms per meter cube per unit volume is equal to the number of atoms per mole multiplied with uh, the mass per volume, mass in grams per volume meter cube divided by grams per mole the mass per mole in grams and this is basically Avogadro's number n sub a number of atoms per mole mass per volume is the density divided by grams per mole that's the atomic mass capital A so the Avogadro's number is Avogadro's number is uh, 6.02 10 to 23. Rho is our density and A is the atomic mass. <coughs> so uh, now we need to look at carbon for carbon. We have uh, the atomic number is 6, uh, the atomic mass is 12 grams per mole, uh, the density is 2220 kilograms per meter cube, which is uh, 
22 times 10 to 6 uh, grams per meter cube or 2.22 grams per centimeter cube. So we can calculate the number density of the atoms. Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to 23 multiplied with density 2.22 10 to 6 grams per meter cube divided by 12 grams per mole. So this gives us uh, 1.1 times 10 to 29 atoms per meter cube. So we have obtained the number density of the atoms. <clears throat> now we know R square average square root it is 0 0.7 angstroms that is 0 0.7 10 to minus 10 meters or 0 0.7 10 to minus 8 centimeters and we know mu 0 4 pi 10 to minus 7 Henry per meter then we can calculate uh, the diamagnetic susceptibility in SI units it is minus 1.1 10 to 29 atoms per meter cube mu 0 4 pi 10 to minus 7 Henry per meters Z is 6 and then we have electron charge square that is 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulombs square times r square 0 0.7 10 to minus 10 meters square divided by 6 times the rest mass of the electron 9.11 10 to minus 31 and this calculation gives us for diamagnetic susceptibility minus 19.03 times 10 to minus 6. Okay. And now, uh, in order to get the result in uh, CGS, so this was our SI calculation. I have to know the conversion between SI and CGS and the easiest thing to do here is to look at the constitutive relations between uh, magnetic induction B, uh, magnetization M and magnetic field H. So here the permeability is basically B divided by H is mu zero times m divided by h which is the uh, susceptibility plus one so this is mu zero times the relative permeability you can see that the relative permeability is one plus the susceptibility in si and if we do this in cgs it's h plus four pi m and mu is basically mu r which is equal to 1 plus 4 pi the cgs susceptibility so you can see that these two relative permeabilities si and cgs should be the same so 1 plus 4 pi chi cgs is equal to 1 plus chi si and that gives you for the CGS susceptibility 1 over 4 pi times the SI susceptibility. So we have figured out the conversion between SI and CGS. So we can now uh, divide our result with 1 over 4 pi with, with 4 pi. So chi CGS will be minus 1 over 4 pi times 19.03 10 to minus 6 which gives us minus 1.5 times 10 to minus 6 and now this is 
this has a unit emu per centimeter cube is the magnetization h is in ersted so emu per centimeter cube ersted <clears throat> So uh, you can see that the result we obtained here, 19.03 10 to minus 6 and 13.82 10 to minus 6, they have a pretty good agreement. Uh, well, actually not so good. It's like 50% uh, higher, but uh, still the same order of magnitude. So let's say that there is uh, an order of magnitude agreement. in our uh, results. So after doing the SI and uh, CGS calculation, we're now commenting on the sources, possible sources of error. So what are the possible sources of error in this calculation? Okay, first of all, in this calculation, we have use of classical mechanics but actually if you do the quantum mechanical version uh, this gives the same result so that's not really a source of error here number two we assumed no contribution from itinerant electrons. So these are electrons in extended states. So we have treated this as an isolated uh, atom and looked at its susceptibility, but actually it's part of a lattice of atoms and we have extended states. And we assumed the system is spherically symmetric. The spherical symmetry argument holds for S electrons, but uh, not for uh, the others. So this is an oversimplification ex as well. Uh, number four, uh, we have uncertainties in the measurement of The atomic radius r square average uh, measurement and furthermore we're using a lenses law at the microscopic scale and finally uh, we did not consider screening effect from other electrons, like other electrons in orbit. So uh, the, the charge that we see uh, at the nucleus uh, may not be ZE because we have screening of the inner core electrons when we go to the contributions from outer electrons. So these are all basically uh, good sources of error. So uh, we are looking at the diamagnetic susceptibility of carbon. The measured value is minus 13.82 10 to minus 6. We're given the density and we know the uh, average radius of the carbon atom 0 0.7 angstroms. We want to calculate the susceptibility in SI and CGS and comment on sources of error in the derivation. The diamagnetic susceptibility we have found to be minus the number of atoms per volume, permeability of free space, atomic number, electron charge squared divided by 6 mass of the electrons times the atomic radius square average value. 
uh, that's considering all possible directions, relative orientations uh, or with respect to the external magnetic field. The number of atoms per volume we can calculate by multiplying Avogadro's number with the density and dividing it by the atomic mass. And the atomic number is 6 for carbon, uh, 6 electrons in orbit. 12 grams per mole is the atomic mass. Density is given, so we can calculate N. And we're given the average radius, so we need to take its square. Uh, because we, we are using the r square average here. Uh, and uh, we can plug in these numbers and obtain chi si. And chi si is uh, dimensionless. Why? Because it is uh, chi, remember, is uh, m divided by h. So in si, this is ampere per meter uh, divided by ampere per meter. So we don't have uh, a dimension so it, this is dimensionless in SI or unitless let's say now in CGS uh, we can use this constitutive relation between M, H and B B is equal to H plus 4 pi M in CGS so if we divide this by H we obtain B over H is mu H over H is 1 M over H is chi so mu uh, is equal to 1 plus 4 pi chi cgs but in si it is uh, b is equal to mu 0 times m over h is chi si plus h over h is 1 plus 1 so relative permeability is 1 plus chi si the relative permeabilities should be the same in si and cgs uh, so we see that chi cgs is 1 over 4 pi chi si so we simply divide this result by 4 pi and write the correct unit, EMU per centimeter cube, Ersted in CGS. Uh, there are many sources of error in this derivation. We, we're using classical mechanics, but ac that actually is not a real source of error. Quantum mechanical result is the same uh, with this, um, in the, within this model. We assumed no contribution from itinerant electrons. We only considered isolated atoms. So we are considering isolated atoms. We don't consider electrons in extended states. Assumed the system is spherically symmetric, that would be only for S electrons. If there are uncertainties in the R square average measurement, we're using Lenz's law at the microscopic scale. And there's, a, uh, there's something important here uh, as we have discussed in the lecture um, that the induced uh, magnetic field uh, by the uh, so so in reaction to the change in the magnetic flux we have an induced magnetic field that is going to uh, persist as long as the uh, flux is not changing because we don't have a resistance in this system. So there was a, uh, so that was a difference between microscopic and macroscopic scale applications of Faraday's law. And we did not consider a screening effect from other electrons in orbit. So we have assumed that this is a single electron orbiting around plus ZE. That's not really true. For each electron, we have screening of the uh, screening coming from the inner electrons, which changes the effective charge that they see. So these are all possible sources of error in this derivation.